நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I explained the characteristics of the Cancer sign, effects of the planet Sun in the house of Cancer, and how the watery signs helps a person to go abroad etc. In this video, I am going to explain the effects of the other planets in the house of Cancer and the effects of the conjunction of different planets in the house of Cancer and much more concepts. Among the signs in the natural zodiac, the Cancer and the Leo are said to be the most significant royal signs. The sun, which is personified as husband, as fire, can be cooled by the wife, which is the moon, which is represented by Panjabodha Tattva water. So, when moon is in conjunction with Mars in the house of Cancer, the Mars will get the cancellation of the debility, that is Nichabanga. So, when Mars is in the house of Cancer, in conjunction with Moon, it will not lose its strength as it gets Nichabanga status. When the Moon is in conjunction with Rahu or Ketu, it is not favorable as the Moon will be eclipsed by a shadow planet. The light energy of the Moon will be swallowed by a shadowy planet. So, in the house of Cancer, when the moon is in conjunction with Rahu or Saturn, it is not good. When the moon is waxing moon or full moon in the house of Cancer, without the connection of a malefic like Saturn or Rahu, it will deliver benefits. Though the moon is Amavasya, in the house of Cancer, it will not give worse effects since Cancer is the own house for the moon. It is not a great shortcoming when moon is in conjunction with Mars in the house of Cancer. Since the moon and Mars are friendly to each other mutually, the conjunction of the moon with Mars is said to be good. However, the moon should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. If Moon is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu in the house of Cancer without any Subhatva, then the planet would deliver worse effects. So try to understand astrology based on the concepts of light energy and try to predict based on the Subhatva of the planet. The next planet that I am going to explain is Mars. Mars will be debilitated in the house of Cancer. Cancer is the own house for Moon, but Mars gets debilitated in the house of Cancer. Though Mars gets debilitated in the house of Cancer, it is in its friendly house. When the native is Scorpio Rashi and Mars is in the house of Cancer, that is, when Moon is in Scorpio and Mars is in the house of Cancer, there will be Parivartan of Mars and Moon in the house of Cancer and Scorpio. Or even if Moon is in the Aries sign and Mars is in the house of Cancer, there will be Parivartan of Mars and Moon. Even if the planet that is Mars is debilitated in the house of Cancer, it doesn't mean that there is a shortcoming. You would have noticed that I have not predicted the worst effects even when a planet is debilitated. I have published thousands of videos where you would have noticed that I have not taken into account to point out the worst effects when a planet is debilitated. It is not a great shortcoming when Mars gets debilitated in the house of Cancer. This is also a good position for Mars in the house of Cancer. 
when mars is in conjunction with moon it delivers great benefits and when mars is in connection with jupiter or aspected by jupiter it delivers great benefits and when mars is in conjunction with the jupiter or aspected by jupiter it delivers great benefits i would like to add another point that is when mars is alone and gets debilitated in the house of cancer it will deliver its least benefits i used to say that when a malefic gets debilitated it is favorable for libra rashi that is tula rashi when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer and gets directional strength it is such a great benefit for libra rashi when mars and saturn which are the natural malefic when they gets debilitated it is a great benefit to the libra rashi or the natives of libra ascendant when mars and saturn gets debilitated for the libra rashi you have to check whether there is any subatva mars gets directional strength in the house of cancer for libra ascendant that is in the 10th house to the ascendant and saturn gets directional strength in the 7th house to the ascendant so having said all the above when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer and it is alone in the house of cancer it is good when moon is in conjunction with saturn or rahu then it is not favorable when moon is in conjunction with saturn and rahu alone then it will spoil this house that is the house of cancer so when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer it is good it will not give any worse effects but it has to get some subatva in order to deliver benefits when mars is in the house of cancer and is aspected by jupiter or in conjunction with jupiter or aspected by venus or in conjunction with venus or even if it is with mercury alone it will do benefits even for the nadu of the scorpio ascendant that is vrishik lagna when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer it is favorable as it is near the directional strength when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer it is indeed the ninth house but it is near the directional strength house which is the 10th house so mars would have attained 75% of the directional strength so even for the native of scorpio ascendant when mars gets debilitated in the house of cancer it is not bad it is good indeed when mars gets vargothama then it is better mars will attain vargothama in punarvasu fourth pada so it is really favorable i forgot to mention about the stars in the house of cancer which i will explain now let me explain about the stars that are residing in the house of cancer there is fourth pada of punarbhusam that is punarvasu which will be the vargothama pada there are four padas of pusam or pushya and there are four padas of ailyam that is ashlesha so in total there are nine padas of three different stars in the house of cancer the house of cancer is the fourth house in the natural zodiac and this denotes the mother now let me explain the next planet mercury for mercury this house is not favorable because this is the mother's house of the mercury where mercury hates its mother the mercury should not be in the house of cancer and if there is parivartan that is mutual exchange of houses by the house lots then it is better when moon is in virgo or gemini and mercury is in the house of cancer then it is better mercury will be in an uncomfortable state when it is in the house of cancer the house of cancer is a movable sign and the house lord is mother for mercury which the mercury hates since mercury is an illicit child it hates its mother the moon when this house is neither quadrant nor trine and when mercury is not in conjunction with venus or jupiter 
or not aspected by venus or jupiter and when it is in conjunction with sun alone in the house of cancer it is not good mercury will be uncomfortable when it is in the house of cancer because this is an enemical house to mercury when mercury is in the house of cancer it is in the house whose lord it treats as enemy this is the preceding house to the most friendly house when mercury is in the house of cancer it is not favorable when it is in the lagna kendra that is in quadrant to the ascendant or when it is in chandra kendra that is in quadrant to the moon then it is good please remember there are always some exceptions when mercury is in conjunction with the venus or aspected by venus or in conjunction with jupiter or aspected by jupiter or in chandra kendra that is in the quadrant house to the moon it is favorable the planets that are in the quadrants to the moon receives the light energy receives a reflection of the light from the moon i have already explained about the quadrants to the moon quadrants are the places where the light energy gets reflected these are the reflection points imagine a four sided glass prism where the light in the middle of the prism will be reflected in all the four sides in the similar way quadrant houses or the houses where the light energies are reflected from another planet with light energy so when moon has good light energy and mercury is in the quadrant to the moon then the enemical nature of the mercury will be subdued if mercury is subhatva with enough light in the quadrant house from the moon the enemical nature will be subdued the mercury treats its mother as its enemy so mercury should not be in the house of cancer therefore when mercury is in the house of cancer it does not have the ability to deliver the benefits yet if it is in connection with jupiter or venus or waxing moon or full moon it will not do bad effects if mercury is in the house of cancer and it is in connection with saturn or rahu then the status is very bad already mercury is in the house which is enemical to it it is in an uncomfortable state in addition to this if it is in connection with saturn or rahu then it will not deliver proper mindset the person will not have a clear mind at all this position of mercury will spoil the mind mercury should not be definitely in connection with rahu though this house is favorable to rahu it is an auspicious house to rahu rahu cannot do any favor you have to predict based on different combinations of the planets when mercury is in connection with saturn or rahu it will reduce the strength of a person's mind so the position of mercury in the house of cancer is not good so try to predict the strength of the mercury based on the subhatva and pabhatva of the mercury and all these will happen during the major planetary period that is dasha of the mercury when mercury is in the house of cancer with pabhatva then the native will not have a proper mindset if you feel that the person is still intelligent despite the position of mercury in the house of cancer then you should check further the subhatva and pabhatva of the mercury when mercury is subhatva by the conjunction of jupiter or aspected by jupiter or in conjunction with venus or aspected by venus it will deliver benefits then the person will have good mind and will be intelligent if the mercury is aspected by waxing or full moon then the native will be intelligent the next planet that i'm going to explain is jupiter and this is the house where jupiter gets exalted every 12 months jupiter gets exalted in the house of cancer this is the most significant house for jupiter among the movable signs the first movable sign is where sun gets exalted 
the second movable sign is where jupiter gets exalted and the third movable sign is where saturn gets exalted and the fourth movable sign is where mars gets exalted that is sun gets exalted in aries jupiter gets exalted in cancer and saturn gets exalted in libra and mars gets exalted in the capricorn these four houses aries cancer libra and capricorn that is mesh kark tula and makar are said to be the raj grahas that is the royal houses one of the subscriber commented in my video the logic behind the concept of raj grahas that is the royal houses that all the male planets gets exalted in these houses so these houses are called as raj grahas that is royal houses this is not true because saturn is not a male it is a neuter planet somebody mentioned that saturn is male neuter planet that is both male and neuter planet a neuter planet is a neuter it cannot be male and also neuter there are certain logics behind these concepts and i will explain more about this in my higher level astrology classes well i have covered the effects of the jupiter in the house of cancer you know something even if i plan to explain the astrological concepts succinctly i can never do so as astrology is like an ocean astrology is like an ocean like a great epic mahabharat Vaishampayana the narrator of Mahabharat narrates the glory of the dynasty to which Janamejaya belongs and the great struggle their ancestors had to pass through to re-establish dharma The very first words of epic Mahabharat starts with Sanjay Uvacha Astrology is similar to this we start with a simple topic and it elaborates like an ocean This is the reason sometimes I go out of topic because those topics are also important in astrology which are really significant points in astrology like I suddenly started expressing about the concepts of raj grahas that is royal houses a while ago let me come back to the subject seems I had taken significant amount of time to explain such topics let me publish videos dedicated for such topics we will definitely do that in future well let me come back to the subject let me continue with the effect of jupiter in the house of cancer the cancer house is the house where jupiter gets exalted jupiter gains all its strength in the house of cancer this is a significant house for the jupiter when jupiter is in the house of cancer it is in the 8th house from its own house sagittarius sometimes jupiter goes through kendra adipati dosha the jupiter will be in the 8th house from one of its own house and in 5th house from another own house that is pisces as per bhavat bhavam jupiter will be in the 8th house from sagittarius yet it will have connection with the pisces as it aspects its own house pisces by its ninth aspect for the native of cancer ascendant jupiter will be the lord of the sixth house so for the native of cancer ascendant when jupiter gets exalted in house of cancer it is good because jupiter will be in the eighth house from the sagittarius which is the sixth house to the native of cancer ascendant and jupiter will strengthen the ninth house to the native of cancer ascendant by its own aspect if you understand bhavat bhavam you can gradually start to predict the charts easily and you will understand the concepts of astrology as well therefore when jupiter is in the house of cancer it is favorable when a person is born as native of cancer ascendant with the jupiter exalted in the house of cancer that happens every 12 months and when jupiter has connection with other planets the person will be very very fortunate i have explained this in many of my videos 
and I have written many articles about this. When the planets are in connection with the exalted Jupiter, it is very favorable. You would have noticed during my online predictions, I would have reiterated a point that when a person is born, when all the planets in the natal chart are in connection with exalted Jupiter, or born during the dasha of the exalted planet, or with the sign where the exalted planet resides, or during the major planetary period of the planet that is aspected by an exalted planet, then the native is very fortunate. And I make a lot of predictions based on these points. Among all the seven planets with exaltation status, the Jupiter is the most significant one. The exalted Jupiter in the house of Cancer has the strength to subdue or to get over all the doshas in a natal chart. When Jupiter is in the house of Cancer, it aspects Scorpio, that is Vrishchik, Capricorn, Makar and Pisces, Mean. You have to check which houses or Scorpio, Capricorn and Pisces are to the Ascendant. All the houses aspected by Jupiter will attain Subhatva. The most significant planet is the Jupiter and in certain cases full moon. I have mentioned in my past videos in which situation the waxing moon can be such a benefic planet that can render Subhatva more than Jupiter. Those who were born with the exalted Jupiter in the house of Cancer are fortunate and the next step is to check which house is the house of Cancer to the Ascendant. For the natives of Taurus Ascendant and the natives of Libra Ascendant, that is for Rishabha Lagna and Tula Lagna, the exalted Jupiter in the house of Cancer is not really necessary. It is better that the Jupiter gets affected in the house of Cancer for the natives of Taurus and Cancer Ascendants. In any situation, the Jupiter will deliver its significance. It will deliver both its significance and house effects. What does the Jupiter signifies? It signifies progeny and wealth. So, when Jupiter is exalted in the house of Cancer, that signifies progeny and wealth, the person who are born with exalted Jupiter in the house of Cancer are very fortunate. Even if the person has certain dosha in the natal chart, the aspect of the Jupiter will help to get rid of those. Now let us see with which planets the Jupiter should not be in connection when it is in the house of Cancer. When Rahu is in conjunction with Jupiter in the house of Cancer, that is Kark, it is called as Chandal Yoga. The Saturn must not be in conjunction with the Jupiter. When Saturn and Jupiter is in conjunction in the house of Cancer and it is also connected with Rashi or Ascendant, the native will be more spiritual. If Jupiter is in conjunction with Rahu, based on the degrees between the Jupiter and Rahu, the person will be an atheist. When there is conjunction of the planets, the planets will always deliver combined effects. Can the Jupiter be in conjunction with Mars? Yes, of course, it is an excellent combination. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Mars, it is called as Guru Mangal Yoga. Mars is debilitated in the house of Cancer, but Jupiter strengthens the Mars when it is in conjunction with Mars in the house of Cancer. And Jupiter will lose its strength a little in such a conjunction. Mars will borrow the light energy from the Jupiter and get strengthened and Jupiter gets little weakened. Mars gets extremely subhatva by the conjunction of the Jupiter. So the native can become an architect, an engineer and they will shine in their field when they choose profession related to the significance of Mars. Jupiter will let the person to be richer. The nature of the Jupiter is to raise a poor to a rich. Jupiter lets a person to earn permanent wealth and more importantly to earn in an honest way. 
One can be very proud to tell by which means they earned when Jupiter helps to earn the wealth. If one cannot express how they earned their wealth, then such a situation is delivered by Saturn and Rahu. This is the difference between the wealth earned by the help of a benefic and a malefic. When Jupiter is in the house of Cancer, it is very auspicious. If Jupiter is exalted and retrograde, then don't assume it has debilitation. I often repeat this particular point in my recent videos. Please predict that Jupiter will deliver contrasting effects when it gets exalted and with retrograde status. When exalted Jupiter in the house of Cancer is retrograde, of course it will lose strength. But if Jupiter is suspected by a benefic like Venus, waxing moon, then the Jupiter will gain strength. The antidote for retrograde is aspect of a benefic. The antidote for retrograde is Subatua, the connection of a malefic. So, in any situation when Jupiter is in the house of Cancer, it is favorable. Let me explain the effect of the next planet, Venus. When Venus is in the house of Cancer, it is not a favorable position. Venus will be uncomfortable because Venus does not like either Sun or Moon. So, we have to predict based on the point that Venus is in the house of its enemy. But Venus is in a movable sign. When Venus is in the house of Cancer, it will be in the 10th house from its own house Libra, that is Tula, and in the 3rd house from its another own house Taurus, that is Rishabh. Venus neither likes Moon nor likes Sun. It hates both of them. The declared enemies for the Venus are Sun and the Moon not even Jupiter. Though we say that Jupiter is an enemy to Venus, the declared enemies for Venus are the Sun and the Moon. So the Venus does not like to be in the house of Cancer. This is an enemical house to Venus. Yet this is a movable sign and when Venus is in the 10th house to the Libra sign, it is with the strength of the quadrant. In general, being a natural benefic when Venus is in the 5th house or 9th house to the Ascendant or Rashi, it is really auspicious. When the Venus is in the house of Cancer, it is inimical to it and it will be uncomfortable, but this will be subdued when it is aspected by a benefic, that is when it gets Subatwa, then the Venus will try to deliver its significance. For the native of Libra Ascendant, if Venus is in the 10th house, then it will gain the strength of the quadrant. It is good. When Venus is not affected by a malefic and it is in the house of Cancer, then it has the strength of the quadrant. The Venus should not be in connection with Saturn or Rahu. If Mars is in conjunction with Venus here, Mars will get Subatwa and Venus will lose its light that is strength. The conjunction of Mars and Venus is called Brigumangal Yoga. Mars is known for its business nature and courage. When one wants to start their own business, it needs a lot of energy to start it. Mars will give such courage to the native. If you observe the natal charts of many businessmen who improved from nothing to the greatest heights, Mars would have helped them a lot in their life. Mars would have given them the courage to take risks in their business life. If Mars is in conjunction with Moon, it is called Chandra Mangal Yoga. If Mars is in conjunction with Venus, it is called as Brigu Mangal Yoga. If Mars is in conjunction with Jupiter, then it is called as Guru Mangal Yoga. Having said all these, when Mars is in conjunction with the natural benefic, it is a yoga. Based on this, when Mars is in conjunction with any of the natural benefics, the Mars will get Subatwa and the natural benefic will lose its light. So, when the major planetary period of Mars happens, that is Dasha of the Mars happens, it will deliver benefits. 
When Venus is in conjunction with Mars, it strengthens the debilitated Mars and loses its own energy. However, since Venus is in conjunction with the debilitated Mars, the strength or the light that Venus will lose will be minimal. Imagine a situation where you are beaten by a rowdy who is weak. Then the harm we undergo and the harm inflicted will be less. The same logic is applied to the debilitated Mars and Venus conjunction. In case if Mars is very strong and Venus is in conjunction with Mars, then Venus will become Pabatwa and Mars will become Subatwa. Imagine a rowdy who is already starving for two to three days and he punches us, then definitely we will not get much injuries. The same situation is applied to the conjunction of the debilitated Mars and Venus in the house of Cancer. Because Mars is already weak here and the Venus conjunction will make the Mars Subatva. Venus has the capability to strengthen any planet, 50% of the strength that Jupiter can do. Having said all these, the Venus can be in conjunction with Mars in the house of Cancer. Now let me explain about the conjunction of Saturn and Venus. Though the Saturn is a friendly planet to the Venus, it should not be in conjunction with Saturn in the house of Cancer. So when Venus is in conjunction with Saturn or Mars, it will lose its significance such as pleasure through women, the relationship of the women and the pleasure of the marital life. Venus should not be in conjunction with the planet Sun as Sun is inimical to it and Venus should not be combusted. Venus can be in conjunction with Mercury because Mercury is a friendly planet to Venus. So, when Venus is not affected by any malafic connection and when it is aspected by full moon, Venus will be in a good status. The Venus can also be aspected by Jupiter, but Jupiter should not aspect Venus by its seventh aspect. That is, Venus and Jupiter should not aspect each other mutually. Venus can be aspected by fifth aspect or the ninth aspect of the Jupiter. Then the Venus will regain the strength that it lost. The next planet that I am going to explain is Saturn. The planet which must not be in the house of Cancer is Saturn. We call Saturn as the Sun that is offspring of the Sun. The Saturn is the offspring of the Moon as well. When we call Sun as the Father, the Mother should be Moon. Saturn which is a shadowy planet does not get along with planets with light energy, that is the sun and the moon. When Saturn is in the house of Cancer, it will spoil the characteristics of the moon such as its motherly nature. It will make a person more selfish. When Saturn is in the house of Cancer, it is in the sixth house from its own house Aquarius and seventh house from another own house Capricorn. The person will be very adamant. If Rahu and Saturn are in the house of Cancer, then the person will not have a good mother. Only the Subhatva of Saturn is the antidote. If you want to predict if the native has a good mother or whether the native would receive any maternal property, you have to check the house of Cancer. You have to predict on the basis of the house of Cancer, the fourth house to the ascendant, and the planet moon. If you want to predict about the mother or maternal properties, then you have to check all these three. In today's Wind TV program, a mother cried that her own daughter eloped with a guy when she was 19 years old and abandoned her mother. She also cursed that her daughter should not live happily. She tends to curse because her daughter is NATO of Pisces Ascendant and Sun is in the house of Pisces and waning moon is heading towards Amavasya and it is in the 12th house Aquarius. 
the house of cancer was also affected in the natal chart both the house of cancer and the gemini were affected i told that she is not a good mother at all because she must have scolded her daughter very badly throughout the period when she was with her daughter i told that her daughter would have never felt a mother's love of course the mother accepted that she did not behave as a good mother if you watch my win tv live program you can follow the points that i told so having said all the above when saturn or rahu is in the house of cancer the mother of the native will be affected in case if the native has got a good mother despite this then the mother will not have proper health the mother will not have good health or wealth there should not be any malafic in the house of cancer if the person got a good mother despite a malafic in the house of cancer then the fourth house to the ascendant will be good and the moon will be in good status so there are four points to be considered in order to know the status of the mother maternal properties etc the house of cancer the planet moon the fourth house to the ascendant the lord of the fourth house to the ascendant if all these four are good in status then you were born to an empress or such a divine person you will get all the love from your mother so if you want to predict the status of the mother of a particular person then you have to check the house of the cancer as well when saturn is in the house of cancer it is not good at all whatever ascendant a native is when saturn is in the house of cancer during the major planetary period of the saturn that is dasha it will affect the mother it will affect not only mother but everything related to the mother it will incur loss to the maternal properties etc so please make a list what are all or who are all related to the mother even your brother is related to the mother as he was brought to this world by your mother maternal uncle maternal aunt etc all such relations will be affected when the major planetary period that is dasha of the saturn happens so in the house of cancer when saturn is positioned it is not good to the native and what could be the antidote for this of course the subatwa of the saturn if saturn is in conjunction with jupiter it is good let me ask a question what would be the effect of the conjunction of saturn and jupiter in the house of cancer the answer is it will lead the person to spiritual life when the saturn is in conjunction with venus it will reduce the pabatwa of the saturn when saturn is aspected by full moon then the saturn will spoil the subatwa of the full moon saturn will reduce the strength of the moon and saturn will turn subatwa if saturn is in conjunction with the full moon or aspected by full moon the saturn will borrow the light from the moon consequently the saturn will weaken the moon and affects the mother and there are a lot more adverse effects when you understand the concept of the pabatwa and subatwa you will be able to predict whether it will affect the mother or if saturn will incur loss to the maternal properties and to which extent it will affect the mother and how much it will affect the moon etc the astrology is an ocean of intricacies and exceptions you have to predict on the basis of light energy this is the thumb rule for any prediction having said all these in any situation when saturn is in the house of cancer it is not good because when saturn is in the house of cancer it will aspect its own house capricorn you know that saturn's aspect spoils a house so when it aspects even its own house it will spoil the own house based on which house the capricorn is to the ascendant you have to predict the effects in case the native is capricorn ascendant then the mind of the native will be completely spoiled 
unless the saturn gets subhadra you can't rely on the character of the native of capricorn ascendant when saturn aspects the capricorn which is its own house the native will be a drunkard because the saturn is in the house of water the house of cancer is a watery sign once one of my clients from another state gave me her daughter's natal chart and she couldn't speak at all her voice was choked with emotion her eyes were welled up with tears when i asked whether her daughter got into the habit of drinking the mother got stunned and nodded yes her daughter was just 18 or 19 years old when i checked her daughter's natal chart The Saturn was in the house of Cancer and during the major planetary period of Saturn that is Dasha of the Saturn the natal got into the habit of drinking The power to our Saturn will lead a person to drink to consume alcohol If it is Janmashani or Eedaraisani that is Saturn Sade Sati it will definitely happen So when Saturn is in the house of watery sign and is in connection with the ascendant or rashi then it will lead the native to be a drunkard when saturn is in cancer it will spoil the house of virgo by its third aspect capricorn by its seventh aspect and aries by its tenth aspect it will spoil whatever house it aspects so saturn in the house of cancer is not good you have to make predictions based on which houses are these to the ascendant in case if the native is cancer ascendant and saturn is in cancer itself then during major planetary period of saturn it will be worse the saturn is in the 6th house from its own house aquarius which is the 8th house to the ascendant During the major planetary period of Saturn the native will dig his own grave because Saturn is in the house of lagna that is ascendant house if it gets subhadra it is an antidote since saturn aspects the 7th house to the ascendant the native will suffer from the spouse so based on the house effects you have to make the predictions What I explain now is based on natural zodiac. To make accurate predictions for a particular ascendant, you have to check which house the Cancer is to the ascendant. I mentioned when Saturn is in the house of Cancer, it is bad. In order to identify how it is bad, please check the ascendant which houses are owned by Saturn to that particular ascendant. You have to identify in which state is the saturn is that is whether the saturn is subhadra or whether the saturn is parbhadra etc based on all these you have to predict the major planetary period that is dasha of the saturn then you have to also check for the stars that resides in the house of cancer if saturn resides in the fourth pada of punarpusam that is punarvasu whose planet lord is jupiter then saturn will get virgo tama if it resides in the star of pusam then it resides in its own star the planets that are functional malefic to a particular ascendant should not be in the own star this rule applies for the natives of the cancer and leo ascendants the saturn must not reside in its own star for the natives of these ascendants if saturn resides in the star of oilium that is ashlesha for the natives of venus ascendant it can do favor to a certain extent for the opponent team such as mars in case if it resides in the star of oilium that is ashlesha for the native of scorpio ascendant or the aries ascendant then the native will be in such a worse situation Finally the antidote is subhadra so for the native of aries ascendant saturn will be the lord of 10th house and 11th house and for the native of scorpio ascendant saturn will be the lord of the 3rd house and 4th house when saturn resides in the star of ailium that is ashlesha 
it will bring the adverse effects but remember the cancer is a watery sign so during the major planetary period that is dasha of saturn it will let the native to travel abroad well in brief it is not favorable when saturn is in the house of cancer you have to make predictions based on the subhatva pabhatva on for which house saturn is the house lord the saturn in the house of cancer should not get into connection with malefics like mars or rahu if saturn is in connection with amavasya moon then it will affect the saturn a lot i often mention another point to you that saturn and sun should not aspect each other that is mutual aspect sun is inimical planet to the saturn saturn will be affected when it is in conjunction with its inimical planets for example the sun and the moon a dark planet likes another dark planet if saturn is in the house of cancer the person will be working during night time the native will be sleeping throughout the day time the native will be the one who prefers the night time than the day time the native will also prefer solitude saturn is a dark planet so the native will prefer solitude and would prefer night time rather than the day time based on the concept of darkness we can explore many more points the next planet that i am going to explain is rahu it is said to be auspicious when rahu is in the house of cancer when rahu is in aries Taurus, Cancer, Virgo or Capricorn that is Mesh, Vrishab, Kark, Kanya or Makar it is said to be auspicious. When Rahu is in the house of Cancer we have to predict the effects of Rahu based on the strength of the moon. Rahu in Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo or Capricorn is said to be auspicious and more importantly when Rahu is in the house of Cancer it is said to be more auspicious because because the house of cancer is a mobile sign aries is also a mobile sign and capricorn is also a mobile sign when rahu is in these mobile signs it is said to be very auspicious rahu will deliver benefits when it is in any of these mobile signs in a special scenario where the moon is ashtami or navami and when rahu is in the house of cancer it is said to be auspicious in brief when rahu is in the house of cancer then it is auspicious and you have to make predictions based on which house the cancer is to the ascendant and whether rahu has got subhatva if only rahu is in connection with jupiter or venus it will deliver benefits definitely rahu must not be in connection with saturn or rahu because the house of cancer is not favorable both for mars and saturn so when rahu is in the house of cancer it is good rahu will deliver great benefits when moon is exalted remember moon should not be in its own house because rahu will not deliver benefits when the moon is in its own house when rahu is alone in the house of cancer without any conjunction of the planets then it will behave in its own way in aries taurus cancer virgo and capricorn rahu will deliver good effects when rahu gets subhatva that is when it gets connection with jupiter or venus then it will deliver benefits when it gets in connection with waxing moon it is more auspicious but rahu should not be in connection with the moon because it spoils the status of the mother the native will get benefits when the house of cancer is subhatva and based on which house the cancer is to the ascendant now let me explain about ketu in the house of cancer when rahu or ketu is in the house of cancer it will try to give the opportunities of traveling abroad remember the house of cancer itself helps in traveling abroad because cancer is a watery sign it indicates the flowing water this house is owned by the planet moon which traverses the signs very fast how do we go abroad in general we take flights 
which are the fastest medium of the travel. So the house of cancer indicates the nature of traveling abroad or traveling overseas etc. When Ketu is in the house of cancer, during the major planetary period of Ketu, the nature will go abroad. If Ketu is Dasha or Antar Dasha, that is major planetary period or minor planetary period happens, it will make the native to travel abroad. The native might also go to another state in the same country. Based on the strength of the cancer, Ketu will also deliver benefits when it is in the house of cancer. Ketu is the planet that grows everything. So when Ketu is in the house of cancer, it is good. Unlike Rahu, Ketu will grow the house. Unlike Rahu, Ketu will not spoil the house. The policy of Ketu is unique. When Ketu is in connection with the exalted Jupiter, then it will lead the native to earn crores of money. When Ketu is in connection with Venus, that also delivers great benefits. So you have to make predictions based on which house the Cancer is to the Ascendant. You have to make predictions based on how much the house of Cancer is auspicious to the Ascendant. When Jupiter is in conjunction with Ketu, it is called as Kala Yoga. And during the major planetary period of Ketu, it will deliver benefits. You can apply all the rules that you have applied for Rahu to Ketu as well. The same rule applies. Let us recall the rules once. The first point is Subhatva, that is the connection of Jupiter and Venus. If the connection of both the benefic planets happens, then it is more auspicious. The second point is they should not get connection of Saturn or Mars. When it is in connection with Saturn or Mars, it will give mixed effect. So, when Ketu is in the house of Cancer, it is more favorable to the Jupiter team ascendants. That is Aries, Scorpio, Cancer, Leo, Sagittarius and Pisces. That is Mesh, Prashik, Kark, Simha, Danush and Mean. When Ketu is in the house of Cancer, for any of these ascendants, the house being the trine or quadrant and when it gets Subhatva by the connection of Jupiter, or Venus, it will deliver great benefits. So Ketu will not produce any worse effects when it is in the house of Cancer. It will do benefit to a certain extent because Ketu will not spoil the house where it resides and such tendency is less. If you need to know any particular points or need to get enlightened about any particular topics related to the Cancer, please write it in the comment section and I will explain in my upcoming videos. The link of the Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box which is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The Google app link is also provided in the description box which is limited only to Android users. Thank you.